the rest of our team. So we can get started. Uh, so again, like I mentioned, my name is Marcella Betancourt. Thank you so much everyone for joining us today. Uh, we are really excited uh, to, to have you join us today. Um, just gonna wait. So I'm the director of the Latino Policy Institute and I'm also a really proud member of the steering committee for the Right From The Start campaign. Um, as you all know, you may be watching either this through Zoom or through Facebook. So thank you for doing so. Um, we are really excited and we want to thank all the elected officials and state agency leaders, program directors, parents, and community members who are joining us today. Um, so before we start the program, if you are joining us through Zoom, we do have a simultaneous Spanish and English interpretation on Zoom. So you can please look at the bottom um, of your screen for the interpretation feature on your Zoom toolbar um, and turn it to by selecting Spanish or English so that you can hear the interpreter. Eh, para las personas que nos están viendo por Zoom, um, contamos con interpretación simultánea el día de hoy en inglés y en español. Entonces, si necesitan este servicio, por favor, busquen la función de interpretación abajo de, de su pantalla y active la seleccionando el lenguaje que van a necesitar. So, we're here today on behalf of the, uh, the Right from the Start campaign. As I mentioned, a campaign led by a team of great advocates in Rhode Island to advance policies for young children and their families in, in our state. Uh, right from the start is a legislative and budget campaign that was launched in 2020 to advocate for policy changes that will help to ensure that every single young child and their families get off to the right start, regardless of race, ethnicity, immigration status, family structure, family income, and zip code. So during this COVID crisis, uh, it has become even more clear than ever that policies and programs that help families and young children are essential for a strong economy and public health. Investments that we make today will help and ensure that our state, um, young, our state's young children and families can weather this crisis and future crisis and, and emerge stronger than, than before. So, I wanted to uh, to recognize, oh, sorry. <laughs> so the parties that, that we have today, um, that, that we have today, that we have as part of our campaign. Um, so we, uh, to, some of them are to enact a strong and state federal revenue policies, pass the Rhode Island Child Care Essential Act, uh, pass Rhode Island Early Educators Investment Act uh, that, to establish goals for early educator uh, and wages and improve our state's family fa paid family leave program, which is actually what we will be discussing today. We also, uh, one of our priorities is to cover community-based doula services, which you'll be able to learn in a couple of weeks even more in our next webinar. We wanna address the staffing crisis in our early intervention programs, um, as well as maintaining a full state funding for children's access to uh, pre-K and Head Start. Um, and the, you know, we were very supportive of the questions that just passed a co couple weeks ago last week, actually, um, which is question three and question five to expand affordable housing and help early learning programs uh, expand their facilities. And I didn't, I, I skipped the slide. I'm incredibly sorry, I did not. Say, I wanted to just give a quick, uh, Thank you and shout out to all of the other organizations that are part of the steering committee. Uh, so Beautiful Beginnings, Economic Progress Institute, uh, Rhode Island Association for Int Infant Mental Health, Rhode Island Association for Education of Young Children, uh, Rhode Island Head Start Association, and Rhode Island Kids Count. So just wanted to make sure I said thank you for that. Perfect. And I wanted to quickly uh, just say a big uh, thank you to the legislators that we have in the room with us today. So I see Senator Gail Golden, who we'll be hearing from uh, soon, as well as Representative Liana Kassar. So thank you so much, uh, both of you, for being here with us today. And now I'll pass it on to Rachel Flum from the Economic Progress Institute. Thank you, Marcella. 
So I'm Rachel Flum. I'm the executive director at the Economic Progress Institute. And one of the key issues that we work on as an organization is the paid family leave program. So we're so pleased to be here um, to share with all of you about the paid leave program and some um, efforts that are underway to further improve the program. So as a brief overview uh, for folks who are not already familiar with paid family leave, Rhode Island was really a leader in enacting the third um, paid family leave program in the whole country in 2013, um, thanks to the great leadership of Senator Golden. This program, which has now been around for, what, um, eight years, is available to any employee who's paying into the TDI or TCI fund. So it comes out of your paycheck and goes into a fund. Um, that is most workers in the state um, who are working for an employer. If you're self-employed or a gig worker, you currently cannot access the program and state and municipal workers also do not pay into the fund. Um, paid family leave provides wage replacement for up to four weeks in any 12 month period to help workers either bond with a child, a newborn, adopted child, or a foster child, and to care for a ser seriously ill family member. Um, in order to be eligible to receive the benefit, the worker must have earnings of at least $12,000, which will be relevant um, in a minute. And the wage replacement, which is the amount of benefit someone gets while they're out on leave, is only about 60% of their wages. Um, so, you know, the maximum benefit, it does cap out at um, about $70,000. So um, your maximum benefit could be $852 um, a week. So it's not, you know, for someone who's making $100,000, they are not able to get 60% of their wages. There is a cap. And one of the most important things about this program is that it does protect someone's job. So while they're out on this leave, they have to be hired back to do the same job at the end of the leave. What we know, however, since TCI has been enacted is that people really use it. Um, it is hugely help and it has been hugely helpful for people during this COVID outbreak. Um, the numbers of people who used TCI in 2020 were about 8,800 workers. This was an 18% increase from the number of folks who used it in 2019. Um, and that really was a credit to the, the uh, Governor Raimondo's administration, who was able to use paid leave to get folks um, a benefit uh, while um, when they were needed to care for someone who had COVID or while they were out because their child care um, provider was closed. Um, so it was a way of getting people support before the federal supports came in um, on you, uh, the unemployment benefits. Um, but in 2020, those 8,800 workers, 60% of them were using paid family leave or TCI to bond with a new child, and the other 40% were using it to care for an uh, ill family member. But what we've also learned, which is this slide, is that the lowest income folks are the least likely to be able to use paid leave. Um, as you can see here in blue, um, those are the folks who are contributing and the yellow are the folks who are actually using paid leave. Um, and so this looks a little upside down to us. Um, the lowest income folks who this program could help the most are least likely to use it as compared to those who are making over $60,000. The next thing is that because the um, our wage replacement amount is so low, it's at 60% of wages, what, what has happened um, since our, our um, legislation was enacted is that other states have taken up paid family leave. And when they have take, passed their versions of paid leave, they have increased the amount of wage replacement. So now we are the state in the country with the lowest amount of wage replacement of all the states that have paid family leave. And that is why we see um, what we saw in the slide before, which is lower income folks are unable to access leave. You know, if you're only making um, $20 an hour and you go out on leave, it's hard to, to get only 60% of that $20 um, to, to take care of your family. And so too often lower wage workers are not taking the leave in which they have paid into and should be entitled to get. The other thing that has happened is that as other states have enacted their own paid leave programs, they have recognized that people need more than the four weeks of leave. 
So this chart shows that most of the states who have paid leave programs actually are offering 12 weeks for the, for the caregiving um, portion of their program, and we are still at four. So not to fear, we have a plan to fix this, or rather Senator Golden and Representative Kassar, who are with us today, have a plan. Um, they have introduced legislation that seeks to address um, these, these problems that we saw in the in this previous slides. Their proposal it would increase the amount that workers with lower incomes would receive while they're out on leave and would actually provide a tax credit for workers at the very lowest end of the scale who are paying into it and then don't use the program. It would increase the number of weeks from four weeks to 12 weeks and it would expand who can use um, the program. So, you know, what we saw during this pandemic is that gig workers and self-employed really benefited from being able to access unemployment insurance. And we think the same is true for paid leave. You know, those are folks who are caring for their families. Often they are um, uh, recent immigrants and they need to be able to support their families just like anybody else. So this proposal would allow folks to be able to pay into the program and access it. And then lastly, we've also learned during this pandemic that people need to care for all sorts of people, um, not just the po folks that they're related to by blood. So this would expand the categories for who, could, who you could take the time out to care for, um, to be anyone who you consider a care recipient. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Marcella. Thank you, Rachel. And I think we're, um, are we going to see the videos? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so th thank you for that. And so now it's my pleasure actually to introduce today um, one of the, the stars of the video that you will see uh, before the end of today. Her name is Wilmaris Soto, Ra Soto Ramos. Wilmaris is the mother of a five month old baby girl, Amory, and a licensed certified social worker working in primary health care with older adults, a job that we all know has been really, really important uh, during the COVID pandemic. So uh, we might just thank you Tim, for being here today. Thank you, Marcella, for that great introduction. And thank you, everybody, for being here today and for supporting um, this campaign and its initiatives. I'm very lucky to be here, and I am so grateful to have this opportunity to share my story with you all. And I hope it resonates in some way, shape, or form. Um, as Marcella said, my name is Wilmaris, and I, am, I live in Pawtucket with my partner, Stephen. Some of you may know him. He's um, part of the school committee here. Um, and we are the parents of our rainbow baby, Amadi, who was born um, last year, October 4th, 2020. So she just, uh, we just celebrated her five months of life. <laughs> um, and this is our first living baby. Uh, we have faced many challenges getting to this point experiencing two consecutive second trimester losses really left me feeling as if I could never have a healthy and full-term pregnancy. At the time, I really did not have the support that I needed. And after getting pregnant for the third time during a pandemic, <laughs> I knew I needed a holistic team to care for me and my new pregnancy. I found a doula, changed my providers, and moved hospitals to ensure that I had the best care um, that I needed and that my family needed. After giving birth to my first living child, although I was overjoyed and in disbelief that she was finally here and healthy, I was still compounded by the grief of my previous losses and postpartum depression really started to affect me significantly. So my OB was very attuned to my needs um, and was concerned for me. So therefore he referred me to a day hospital um, for their partial program for other women and other moms experiencing postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, and between this program, check-ins with my OB and the support of my doula, family and friends, I'm now feeling much better and have gained essential tools to continue to help me every single day. Becoming a mother helped me turn into an advocate. And one of the ways I'm using my experience is to, cre to create a better place for my baby to grow up in and to make the world a better place for other moms and dads is by starting my own private practice to support other families and other parents who have experienced such a loss. More importantly, I'm a proud supporter of the right from the start policy agenda. As you will soon see when Rachel plays the video for you all, I appear in the right from the start paid family leave video. 
We hope to make the video to encourage General, General Assembly members to pass legislation to improve our paid family leave program. I specifically want to say that we need to expand our state's family leave program, temporary caregivers insurance, to provide at least 12 weeks at home with a new baby for all parents, regardless of whether they give birth and or are an, an adoptive, foster care, or are the dad and, of non-birthing parents. And to increase the amount of money families receive when they are on paid leave, so it is closer to what they earn normally. Four weeks is not nearly enough time at home with the baby. It truly isn't. We know that babies need at least 12 weeks at home with their parents to get off to a good start. And many experts recommend more weeks at home. Other countries provide six to 12 months of leave, which is amazing. And both Connecticut and Massachusetts offer 12 weeks for both parents, but Rhode Island um, only offers four weeks right now. Even more importantly, we need to increase the wage replacement rate so that lower wage workers can afford to take time off. When you have a new baby, you need more money and not less money. <laughs> There's diapers and wipes and there's baby formula, bottles and pacifiers, cribs, strollers, all you can think of. Babies are kind of expensive and families cannot afford to take leave if they don't have enough replacement income. If you make, for example, $14 an hour, you can't survive on that 60% if you stay at home with your new baby. So people go back to work way too early before they're ready and before their baby is ready. And this impacts the bond between the parent and the child. I wanna thank you all again for attending um, today and I urge you to support um, the legislation to improve Rhode Island's family pa uh, paid leave program. And now Rachel will play the video for you all. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And again, I urge you all to support this legislation and efforts to create a better program for our families. The gift of paid family leave is really the gift of time. It takes time for new mothers to recuperate from the birthing process. The more that we can support mothers and young families, fathers as well, the healthier their relationships are going to be for their lifetimes. My daughter's name is Amadi. She is our rainbow baby. We've had two previous losses before her, so she's our little miracle. People should be able to get paid their full amount if they have to be out for the birth of a child. I'm the breadwinner of the family right now, and I don't qualify for any state assistance at all. So it's just a balancing act. I was able to take off 10 weeks from work because that's what my job offers. Definitely was not enough time with her. When you don't get that time with your child um, and you have to go to work, like most working moms have to do, you don't get to spend those sweet moments like you used to. Parents and families need a support system in general to be able to raise a, a, a child. It is incredibly important that they are provided with the services and funding and support that they need from the beginning so that those children and the families can be successful in the future. We want them to feel secure in not losing their job. And more importantly, we would love to be able to expand that to longer weeks so that the parent can take care of their child. If we are not providing the best education, the best child care, when they're younger, it can and will affect the trajectory of that child and that family. If families are able to have six months or a year, that's what many other countries support. I definitely see families that are stressed because they have to return to work earlier than they want to. It's really not fair that some people have to make the choice based on serious economic disadvantage. People do not abuse this. It is underutilized more than it's overutilized. 
healthy social emotional development is the best indicator we have of lifelong health and well-being. If I had returned to work without being able to extend my time through this program, it would have just made everything so much more difficult to care for not only for myself and my mental health, but for a newborn who needs all of my attention and all of my love. Thank you again, Winmaris, for, for that and um, for having a star in the video, the tiny star. <laughs> thank you for that. I also wanted to uh, briefly say thank you to Senator Sandrakano, who joined us today and who's a great supporter of Right From The Start um, as well with, with uh, legislation that she's supporting. Um, so next I wanted, uh, we, wa we will be hearing from uh, one of the senators uh, who is also supporting this uh, paid leave uh, legislation. So uh, Senator uh, Gail Golden, who has spent nearly a decade championing important legislation for Rhode Island families, including, as Re Rachel mentioned earlier, becoming uh, the third state to have paid family leave and help uh, pass T uh, TCI in a wide, a wide array of economic equity efforts. Uh, thank you for that, Senator Golden, and welcome today. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone at uh, for including me today and for having um, this event on paid family leave. I'm Will Maris, thank you so much for lending your voice today and also participating in that video. I know how nerve wracking it can be sometimes to tell our stories publicly and yet it is one of the most compelling ways that we actually see policy change and like you becoming a mom and having my own reasons, the medical crisis that I needed caregiving for is um, what turned me into an advocate for paid leave and certainly is one of the reasons why I ran for office. So in 2012, when I ran for office to make paid family leave a reality, um, you know, it, it was a big step for our state. And as you've heard, temporary caregiver insurance was passed in 2013. 13. It's an expansion of our existing temporary disability insurance program, which is one of few in the nation, um, which ensures that you have, have some wage replacement for your own medical care. But temporary caregiver insurance makes sure that you're able to take four weeks out, re receive some paid pay, uh, some wage replacement for that time in order to care give for a loved one. And when the back, a bill first passed the Rhode Island Senate, it was actually uh, would have been eight weeks of temporary caregiver insurance. In order to get it past the House, uh, we compromised it down to four weeks. I knew that it was important to get this program started and to make sure that no one would have to fear losing their job while taking that time. So I was willing at that time to see us put it in place for four weeks. And I knew that I would continue to fight until we saw something better in our state. We are well beyond the time where we can accept half measures. We need real change now, and that's what this bill is about. You know, we all want to live in a community where we feel safe and we love our jobs and our families and where we have the time to care for ourselves and for our loved ones. This past year has shown us what that really means. People have spent every day managing our risk can my kid go outside to play with his friends? Is it all right to bring dinner over to my parents' house and drop it off? What will happen if I get sick? It has just been a year of worry for so many of us. And for some, the existence of our temporary caregiver insurance became a lifeline. As Rachel explained before, the governor in March of 2020 20, as she was closing schools and childcare, opened up the temporary caregiver insurance program so that people could use it to, for those four weeks to care for their child who was out of childcare or out of school. That was a drop in a bucket for what was really needed, but it was a lifeline for some. And we know it because claims increased by over a thousand percent in one month alone when that all happened. 
And the briefest glance of the data of how paid leave has been used in our state will tell you what we already know. The, the pandemic disproportionately impacted Rhode Island women. More often than not, women shoulder the responsibilities of caregiving in their families. And sometimes that's for children and parents at the exact same time. So it's no surprise that this year that men's claims for temporary caregiver insurance for family caregiving significantly increased, but the number of women applying for temporary caregiver insurance increased even more. Most of the uses for temporary caregiver insurance prior to COVID were for parental leave. Um, but in this past year during COVID, we've seen a significant increase in demand for family caregiving. Temporary caregiver insurance works, but as if you've heard from Will Maris, it needs to grow in order to meet the needs of all families. And thankfully, hope is in the, on the horizon. You know, more people are getting vaccinated. We have beautiful sunny days ahead, like the one we have right now outside. And as we consider the next stage of Rhode Island's future, let's remember that the economy is actually all of us. And in 2021, we need policy change that creates a new normal. We can't go back to the world we were in prior because we know that there were significant problems. We need a new normal where caregiving is valued and where families can continue to live and work. So that's why Representative Kassar and I are introducing a paid leave expansion bill that will address so many of the lessons we have learned. This bill would mean more weeks, it'll cover more workers, it increases the amount that, pay, that would be paid to many workers, and it creates a more equitable way for people to pay for it and to use it. It also makes sure that the government doesn't tell you who you love, but rather would allow people to apply for temporary caregiver insurance, to care give for their grandchildren, their siblings, and other loved ones. I know that I and um, and I'm sure Representative Kassar are both very grateful for all the advocates and the organizations and people like Wilmaris who are supporting our bill um, and really going to push to see this change happen. Temporary caregiver insurance has proven both during COVID and before it to be worthwhile, much needed resource for sustaining Rhode Island families during the inevitable times when a family member needs care. It is time to build on that success and expand temporary caregiver insurance to better meet the actual needs for what why for which it is being used. So thank you. And we encourage you all also to talk to your legislators about these two bills. Thank you so much, Senator Golden, for all the work that you do. And so next we wanted to also introduce another partner of our Rhode Island uh, at Right From The Start campaign. So doc, uh, Dr. Pam High is a pediatrician and a leader in the Rhode Island chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, an organization that has signed up uh, to our campaign. Dr. High is a professor of pediatrics at Brown University's Alpert Medical School and directs developmental behavioral uh, at Hasbro Children's Hospital. Thank you, Dr. Hyde, for being with us today. So thank you so much, Marcella, and uh, right from the start committee for this opportunity to represent um, pediatricians and the American Academy of Pediatric, who uh, is a member of your alliance and very much in supportive of these initiatives. Um, I wanna just take a few minutes to share my perspective as a pediatrician, but also as a parent and a grandparent. Um, certainly we know that all babies require consistent love, care, and attention in order to thrive. The nurturing relationships that develop between parents and their infants in these first few days and weeks and months of a young life found, form the very foundation for lifelong physical and emotional health, as well as for lifelong learning. During this early time together, parents learn about the special qualities and unique needs of their babies while babies learn to trust in the care and the love that their parents provide. They develop rhythms together that set the stage for healthy development. But this dance, it takes time to learn it. It really does take time. Many working families, however, struggle to earn enough money to pay household bills and have enough time at home to meet 
the intensive caregiving needs that are brought along with a newborn, a newly adopted or foster child in a family. But they just can't afford to take the time off to invest in this uh, quality experience. In addition to helping families care for their new babies, TCI or paid family leave helps individuals take time off they need to care for a seriously ill child or another seriously ill family member or loved one that might be a spouse, a parent, a grandparent, a grandchild. We need to increase our wage replacement so that more low wage workers can afford to take time when they need it most. And as you've heard from Rachel's um, great presentation initially, of the states that now have paid family leave, Rhode Island is at the very bottom of the wage replacement rate. Rhode Island also doesn't offer enough time to give babies and parents the best chance to develop secure relationships that are the foundation for lifelong health. Researchers agree that 12 weeks is the minimum leave needed to help parents care for infants and new children. Congress passed uh, bipartisan legislation a year or so ago that provided 12 weeks of paid family leave to federal employees, but yet those uh, in Rhode Island that are not federal employees do not benefit from that. Child development researcher tells us that um, six to 12 months as provided in most European countries is even better than only three months to encourage formations of these foundational early bonds. Taking time off from work to care for a new child reduces maternal depression. It improves parent-child interactive interactions allowing the building of foundational parent-child relationships. It increases breastfeeding rates and the duration that moms can continue breastfeeding their babies. It enhances father's involvement in parenting and it increases infants access to preventive medical care and those all important immunizations that we know that they need early on. Paid family leave reduces child maltreatment rate and is even linked to decreased child mortality. So paid family leave is well worth our investment and it is time for us to grow it in Rhode Island. We were at the forefront and now it, it's time for us to continue to lead. Our children and families in Rhode Island deserve it. As um, Will Maris described so beautifully in telling her story. So thank you for this opportunity to share um, my thoughts. Thank you so much, Doctor. Next, we have uh, the, the sponsor of this legislation in the House, uh, Rep. Liana Kassar, who is a strong supporter of legislation that seeks to improve public health and economic equity for all Rhode Islanders. Thank you so much, Rep. Kassar, for being here with us today. Thank you, Marcella. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you to everyone, all of the champions from the Rights from the Start campaign for all the amazing organizing and advocacy that you do in our state for an inclusive economy. Um, it's amazing and truly tireless. Um, uh, it's wonderful that we have such a passionate community. Um, and thank you to everyone who shares their story, including Lumaris um, and your beautiful baby. My children are older, so like babies look like magic <laughs> right now. Um, um, I appreciate that you share your stories because they really do help me and my colleagues understand how we can better pass better informed legislation. Um, it's a privilege to pick up this work and join you as we introduce this legislation in the House um, for the expansion of TCI. The need for this was obvious when I first got to know Senator Golden way back when, when she was first championing the legislation in 2013, and the proof of its importance has really only grown since then. You know, we can all think of examples of our own family experiences when TCI could have made a huge difference. The family I grew up in balanced childcare through the support of family members. Throughout my childhood, one or the other of my grandmothers lived with us to care for my brother and me while my parents worked outside the home. At one point, my grandmother ended up needing to be hospitalized for health issues for a while, and it fell to my mother to balance the childcare that my grandmother had covered while also being her advocate at the hospital. At that time, my mother had a very challenging boss who was not amenable to being flexible with her schedule. Um, and really just it wasn't accepting that my mother needed just a few hours here and there to take care of the family. 
we managed and my parents juggled everything um, during that time, but it easily could have triggered a job loss and subsequent economic challenges for our family. The strength of this proposed legislation is truly in the interconnected elements that come from the experience of having originally passed the TCI legislation um, in 2013. Um, if we're able to pass the, um, this legislation this year, it would add protections for the growing population of workers who are the gig economy workers. And I think why that is so critical at this point, one of the many critical pieces is that that population reflects a growing number of women who are currently balancing their family and childcare schedules through gig work and home-based businesses. As we emerge from the pandemic, that, is, that population will only grow um, as families um, look to both reestablish their childcare um, arrangements and figure out how the economics of families are gonna move forward um, as they dig out of this recession. Um, additionally, another uh, feature that I think is really quite powerful um, that was already mentioned, but I just wanna dig in a little bit because our family units are evolving. Our care networks, our households, they're evolving. The, the traditional family model for many people, especially communities of color, low-income communities, the household model has been, um, has been tended to be an expanded model. Um, and we take care of our family members, whoever is within the household. The benefits really need to reflect the fact that um, these complex units need to be more inclusive of who we define as care recipients. The provision in this legislation, I think would have um, a significant impact on inclusivity for the more marginalized uh, families in our communities. So especially as we emerge from the pandemic, um, some of our family members really are gonna face long-term impacts of COVID and the provisions in the TCI bill can lend some, st some level of economic stability. For many of us, our job stability is also our link to our health coverage for ourselves and our, ourselves and our families. So when we talk about these benefits providing job stability, we also are referring to them as the stability for access to healthcare for so many families. I encourage my colleagues to support this comprehensive initiative um, for these two and many other reasons. And I hope that you will help me um, in joining the chorus to make sure that we get this across the across the finish line. It's been a game changer for families over the past seven years, and it's just time to be more inclusive and expand that benefit to more, to more folks. So thanks for the opportunity and thank you for all of your work. Thank you so much, Representative Kassar and First Senator Golden for your commitment to this work and your leadership on this legislation. You know, I think there were so many great points that were brought up today. I was taking notes on the things that I need to remember to say. Um, so thank you, you know, um, Dr. High and Will Maris for being here. Um, it's, it's so helpful to hear different versions and different um, stories about how this impacts different folks. I also want to mention that Senator Cano, who's with us today, and Representative um, Geraldo in the House have put in legislation that focuses on Rhode Island's FMLA program, um, which is the unpaid job protection uh, um, law. And, you know, it really is so needed to update our FMLA statute. So thank you, Senator Cano, for putting that in. And lastly, I just want to mention that Senator Pearson will also have legislation that will help reduce the amount that all workers are paying into the fund by having employers help share in that cost. So we encourage folks to look for and support that piece um, of legislation as well. So after hearing all of this, how can you get involved? Um, we encourage you to go to the Right From The Start website and follow us on Facebook and Twitter to find out when all of these bills will be heard and how you can testify and tell your stories. Also on the Right From The Start, um, it's rightfromthestartri.org website, uh, you can click on the Take Action link and actually fill out a form to, to email your legislator directly. So we encourage everyone to do that. And if you have a story to tell of your own, you know, everybody has a caregiving story, we would love to hear that as well. So please reach out to our campaign at the email link, the info at rightfromthestart.org. And we'd love to work with you to hear your story and we hope then share it with legislators uh, for why we need to improve this legislation. 
I just like to reiterate how important it is that we focus on improving programs like paid family leave that allow families to balance their work and, and familial obligations. You know, if we've learned nothing during this year of COVID, it's that we have seen in stark focus how this country's failure to help families balance those obligations are really resulting in women leaving the workforce in droves. You know, that is really going to have ripple effects on our economy and families for decades to come. And this is our moment to do something about that here in Rhode Island and make real transformative change um, to improve this program um, and move all of us forward. So thank you all for being here and I'll turn it over to Marcella for final words. Thank you everyone and thank you for taking time for, to be with us this afternoon. So we have a few more events uh, this spring. Our next one will be on March 24th and it will focus on uh, uh, how to improve Medicaid and health insurance coverage for community-based doula services. And so we might as actually mentioned um, her work with doulas a little bit and, and we'll hear a little bit more in a couple of weeks. On April 7th, uh, we'll discuss the Rhode Island Early Educator Investment Act. And finally, on April 28th, uh, we'll have Strolling Thunder, which is uh, the 10th anniversary um, of Rhode Island Ch Child Care Awareness day and early childhood advocacy day i feel like this is a staple of like rhode island kids count so this is a really exciting thing that the red from the star campaign will also be part of so thank you again to everyone for joining us today uh to our legislators and senators for for the work that you do every day and for the advocates thank you so much have a beautiful rest of your day and enjoy the outside <laughs> bye everyone <laughs>